Hi, I'm Katie, a Hobbycraft artisan and artist. In this video, we will go through some basics, as well as go through all the materials you'll need to begin with acrylic painting. Let's get started. If you enjoy this video, subscribe to the Hobbycraft channel and click the bell icon to be notified when new videos are posted. Acrylic paints come in a variety of different brands and types, so the choice can be quite overwhelming. A good place to start is a good quality acrylic in a tube, such as the Pebio Studio Acrylics. These acrylics are great for beginners because of their high viscosity, which means an opaque and strong colour can be achieved. The colour range is also great and they come in a range of effects, including opaque, transparent and diner. Acrylic paint is generally quite a thick paint already, but you can get some heavy bodied options such as the Sennelier Abstract Paint. These are even thicker and perfect for impasto techniques such as with a palette knife. The Liquitex brand acrylic is also a good heavy bodied paint. These paints dry with a stunning satin finish that retains brush strokes and palette knife marks, perfect for those looking to create texture in their work. Hobbycraft's own brand acrylics are great value, which makes them a great option for beginners. These are available in large multi-packs and also single tubes, making them ideal for someone who is just getting started. Top tip. It is important to remember that acrylic paint dries slightly darker than when it is first applied out of the tube, so bear this in mind when selecting and mixing colours, and if in doubt go for a lighter shade where necessary. Brushes come in a variety of different shapes and sizes. I recommend having a few different ones to get started with. Firstly, they are sized by number and range from the smallest size 0000 through to the largest size 24. Because of their flexibility, you don't need many brushes to get started. A wash brush is a larger brush for creating large areas of colour. It may be used with paint diluted with water to create wash effects for backgrounds or other large areas. A flat brush is useful for covering large areas, as well as getting finer lines when used on its edge. A round brush has a smaller and softer edge which tapers into a tip, allowing for more controlled work, including detail. I suggest having two or three different sizes of round brush for different levels of detail. An angled brush has slanted bristles in order to create varied lines and get into curves and corners more easily. This flexible brush will allow you to change up your lines from thick to thin with just the one brush. The angled brush is also useful if you use an easel when painting because of the angled nature of the work on an easel. There are a range of other brushes which are generally used for certain techniques such as a fan brush which is effective for painting trees, shrubs and water and can be used in different ways to create different effects. For example, tapping the brush on the page looks very different from creating strokes with the brush. Liner and rigger brushes are for extremely small detail and lines, perfect for adding highlights and detail you can't get with any other brush. Acrylic paint can be applied to many different surfaces. Its opaqueness allows for use of wood and plastic, which is great for craft projects and home decor. Acrylic paint works best on speciality acrylic paper, such as the Sea White Smooth 360 GSM paper. It can also be used on heavier cardstocks. Texture paper can also be good if you want a tooth to come through once the paint is laid down. A canvas is a good choice if you want your painting ready to be displayed. It offers a really nice working surface with a little bit of texture and they come in lots of different sizes as well as in the stretch and box option. When using acrylics, I like to use a flatbed palette such as this one. I find mixing the colours on here really easy. Tear-off palettes are also really useful because they can just be torn off and disposed of when you're finished. You don't need to wash them. Palettes with wells are also a good option as they keep all your colour in one place so you have more control when mixing colours. I recommend trying out both a well palette and a flatbed palette and see what works best for you. Before starting your painting, it's good practice to set up your space with everything you will need at arm's reach. You can paint on a flat surface or use an easel. Prepare a clean container of water for washing brushes and have some paper towels beside you for drying your brushes. Squeeze out your planned colours onto your chosen palette. Because acrylics are fast drying, I recommend only putting down colours as and when you need them to stop them from drying out. 
When mixing colours, ensure to mix enough for the given area as making the same mix twice is difficult to achieve and it's likely your shades will not match. Visit hobbycraft.co.uk to book a workshop, find your next craft project or learn a new skill. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a thumbs up and we'd love to see your thoughts in the comments below. See you again soon for more videos.